If you've ever been to a temple, and this is what I do on Luke's Chinatown guide, is take, take my tour group to the temple, uh, you'll notice the angle. The temples are built on a kind of a, like an inward, well, hang on, do it from that way. So an inward, they lean slightly inward. And what that, what that effect does is when you're looking at a temple, um, you can see that the eyes kind of shift upwards. So it actually, you feel this experiencing of kind of like uh, lifting your gaze upward. And it's kind of like this, the spiritual nature of Buddhism to be lifting up, lifting upward. That's quite a unique feature, and these temples here have a really distinct angle leaning inwards. Actually, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be in here. I've just noticed the door's been shut, so I might tiptoe out of here. <laughs> So the next stop on Luke's tour of Chinatown is Wat Pratum Kong, or Patum Kong Ka, as it's also known as. Now this is a second class uh, Buddhist temple, and it's very important because somebody got uh, executed here. Now this is an impressive and very quiet temple. Uh, it's just after the rain has come, so it's nice and cool at the moment as well. Uh, now there's a very, this, this uh, what, although it's not one of the major tourist stop, stops, it's actually very important uh, and has a significant story to be told about how one of the princes was executed here. I'll just find a seat and tell you all about it. So this is what Pratu Kong. Uh, now, its former name was Wat Sampeng, and Sampeng is a very famous road in Chinatown, which we're going to visit pretty shortly, uh, and it's called Sampeng Lane. So this is, Sampeng Lane got its name from this temple. Now this temple, no one actually knows when it was built, there's no records of when this temple was built, but it dates way back to the Ayutthaya period. Now what's significant about this uh, temple, and why we stopped here, is it's uh, significant history in the execution of a prince. So the prince uh, that we're going to talk about was a close friend of King Rama III. Now he was a close friend before Rama III ascended to the throne. So when King Rama III did eventually ascend to the throne, he gave his friend, uh, his, close, his close friend the prince, uh, powers which were much equal to his own. And this prince went on to abuse these powers. So the prince was instrumental in legalizing gambling and gambling debts in Chinatown, which eventually went on to cripple Siam. He was also uh, behind uh, a big tax on any hard liquor that was being sold, and he benefited greatly from that. And he also doubled the labor taxes for the Mons, the Mon clan, the Mon people. And when they complained, he sent his hitmen out to silence them. He was a nasty piece of work, really. So this went on for some time, and the king kind of tolerated it until he found some irregularities in the royal accounts. Uh, when he investigated, he also discovered that there was a plot for the prince to dethrone the king at the time. So when, and then when this was discovered, the king could only take one uh, course of action, and that was execution. The prince was brought here to Wat Sam Peng for his execution. So the, the laws at the time dictated that he was his head was covered in a velvet sack and he was beaten to death with a sandalwood stick. There's a very interesting feeling I've got here at this temple, knowing about the history of the prince who was executed. But it's very, very quiet and peaceful, apart from some Buddhist chants. And if you've ever had the experience uh, to be in the vicinity or heard some Buddhist chant, uh, monks chanting, it's quite mesmerizing, quite hypnotic in a way. Now, the last time I experienced this was at my mother-in-law's funeral. And there was a certain time, a point in the ceremony, where the Buddhist monks were chanting. And it felt like it kind of rattled all the way down deep into my soul. These monks are chanting in the temple, so I don't really want to go and disturb them. But it's just a, such a hypnotic kind of mesmerizing tone. Uh, 
and it's it's hard to describe if you haven't haven't heard it before because it's not really an auditory sensation it's more like a soul or spirit kind of a sensation it's uh, quite moving actually <laughs> So what I'm hearing actually is the, the Buddhist monks at a funeral ceremony. So in the Vihan nearby, there's a, a, a funeral ceremony taking place. So I won't go and film it, but I'll see if I can find the, find the execution stone. Actually, what I just said sounds quite terrible. There's a funeral ceremony. Let's go and find the execution stone. They're two separate things. The execution stone was from a long, long, long time ago, and it was what the prince, whether it was used where the prince was executed. The funeral that's taking place now, there's no connection. So yes, just out side uh, of the temple you'll find the execution stone now I'm only new to Bangkok I've only been living here for a year and a half but from what I understand uh, this rock was laid flat uh, the prince was laid flat uh, face down and then the sandalwood stick with it he had the velvet sack over his head he was laid flat and the sandalwood stick was aimed at the back of his neck and that's how the execution uh, a royal execution was uh, uh, was, ex was executed at the time. So his body was then thrown in the Chow Prayer River after he was killed.